In this session, we will look at a few more examples of multiplicative functions. Okay, so the first function that we will look at is called as the Liouville's function. Okay, so how do we define the Liouville's function? We define the Liouville's function at 1 to be 1 and for any n where p1 raised to a1, p2 raised to a2 up to ps raised to as is the prime factorization of n it will be minus 1 raised to the sum of the powers. Okay, so this is the uh, way in which we define the Liouville's function. So let us show that the Liouville's function is completely multiplicative. It is quite easy to observe this. So, so we start with some n and m in a set of positive integers. If either n or m is 1, then there is essentially nothing to prove. Uh, in that case, the proof is very easy, so I will leave that out to you. So suppose n and m are not 1, then they have a prime factorization. So we will take n to be p1 raised to a1, p2 raised to a2, up to pk raised to ak. Now notice here that we are not saying that n and m are relatively prime. So they could have the same prime factors. So we need to also take m to be p1 raised to b1, p2 raised to b2, up to pk raised to bk. Where we allow ais and bis to be in the set n union. 0. We allow them to take the value 0 also. So in this case let's see what the Liouville function is. Notice that if any of these powers are 0 it will not contribute to this sum. So it will not change the definition. So therefore we see that lambda n times m this will be lambda of p1 raised to a1 plus b1, p2 raised to a2 plus b2, up to pk raised to ak plus bk. Now by definition, what is this? This will be minus 1 raised to a1 plus b1 plus a2 plus b2 plus up to ak plus bk. This is the same as minus 1 raised to a1 plus a2 plus up to ak into minus 1 raised to b1 plus b2 plus up to bk. Okay, And this will be lambda of n times lambda of m. So this proves that lambda is a completely multiplicative function. Okay, now let us prove this uh, fact. So since uh, lambda is, multipli is completely multiplicative, lambda is also multiplicative, which means that the function defined by say g given by summation d divides in lambda of d, this will be a multiplicative function. We have proved this before that if the, uh, the function inside the sum is multiplicative then the sum itself is a multiplicative function. So we see that g is a multiplicative function. Okay, Let's uh, show that this is true, this formula is true when n is 1 first. So when n is 1 what is g of n? So what is g of 1? g of 1 will be just lambda of 1. Okay, so g of 1 is lambda 1 which will be 1 itself and here you can see that the sum is 1 if n is a square and we know that 1 is a square, 1 can be written as 1 square itself. So 1 is a square and this is what the formula says it should be. So uh, this formula is true when n is 1. Now if the prime factorization of n is p1 raised to a1 into p2 raised to a2 
अप टू पी के रेज टू ए के इन दिस केस जी ऑफ एन सिंस जी इज मल्टीप्लीकेटिव विल बी जी ऑफ पी वन रेज टू ए वन इंटू जी ऑफ पी टू रेज टू ए टू अप टू जी ऑफ पी के रेज टू ए के नाउ वी नीड टू इवेल्युएट वॉट इज जी ऑफ ईच ऑफ दीज टर्म्स ओके सो वॉट इज जी ऑफ पी आई रेज टू ए आई सो वॉट इज जी ऑफ सो वॉट इज दिस दिस विल बी समेशन डी डिवाइड्स पी आई रेज टू ए आई लामडा ऑफ टी विच इज बेसिकली समेशन द डिवाइज ऑफ पी आई रेज टू ए आई आर बेसिकली वन पी पी स्क्वेंस वन सो आई गोइंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू ए आई लामडा ऑफ पी आई रेज टू विथ जी पी आई रेज टू जी so what is this this will be 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and so on up to either 1 or minus 1 now notice that if ai is even if ai is even then this will be 1 and if ai is odd then you will get the same number of minus ones as plus ones so this will be One if AI is even and zero if AI is odd. From here you can prove this fact very easily because we are just trying to compute what is G of n. Notice that if if n is a square, in that case. all the ais will be even which means that we will get 1 into 1 into 1 into 1 which will mean that g of n is 1 if ais if ai is not a square at least one of these ais will be odd and for that particular ai g of pi raised to ai will be 0 which means that g of n will also be 0 because the we are taking the product so therefore this proves the proof of the theorem okay so next let's try to find the inverse of lambda now we know that lambda i is a completely multiplicative function which means that that the inverse of lambda is mu times lambda okay this is the inverse of lambda so we need to prove that mu times lambda is the same as modulus of mu uh, just to recollect what is mu defined as so mu of n is defined to be 0 if n is not square free and it is defined to be minus 1 raised to k if n is square free and has k prime divisors so that is the way we define mu so we will prove the theorem in three uh, steps first for n equals 1 we will show that uh, lambda inverse of n is the same as mod of uh, mu n then we will take the we will take the case where n is not square free and finally we will take the case when n is square free so when n is 1 what do we have when n is 1 lambda inverse of 1 will be mu of 1 times lambda of 1 which is 1 itself and this is the same as modulus of mu of 1 okay in fact this is the same as mu of 
so, because mu of 1 is 1 so modulus of it is 1 itself now what happens if n is not square free n is not square free so if n is not square free then we see that mu of n will be 0 okay and this is the same as mod of mu of n since mu of n is 0 mod of mu of n will also be 0 and therefore lambda inverse of n will be 0 which will be because mu of n is 0 and lambda inverse is mu times lambda so therefore this will be the same as mod of mu of n what happens if n is not square free say suppose n is that means that it is a product of some k distinct primes in this case we see that lambda inverse of n okay this is mu of n times lambda of n now mu of n will be minus 1 raised to the number of primes which is k and lambda of n will be minus 1 raised to 1 plus 1 that is the powers of each of the primes which is 1 plus 1 plus 1 k times which is again minus 1 raised to k and therefore this will be minus 1 raised to 2k which is 1 itself and you can see that this is the same as mod of mu of n because mu of n is minus 1 raised to k so modulus of minus 1 raised to k is 1 okay so this proves that the inverse of lambda is just mod of mu of a now we will define another function okay which is called as the divisor function so for each alpha we have this divisor function which is summation d divides n d raised to alpha okay and uh, here you can see this is here n belongs to n okay so for any n in n we define d of n to be the number of divisors of n okay and you can see that the number of divisors that is you're counting one for every divisor it will be summation d divides n one and one is the same as d raised to zero so this is the same as sigma zero of n this is one of the divisor functions but we are treating it separately I would also like you to see that sigma 1 okay which sometimes we call as sigma is the sum of divisors of n okay now notice here that sigma alpha is multiplicative so how can you tell that sigma alpha is multiplicative so sigma alpha is basically n raised to alpha convolution with u now we know that n raised to alpha is completely multiplicative what is n raised to alpha n raised to alpha of n would be small n raised to alpha this function here is obviously completely multiplicative and hence multiplicative also u is completely multiplicative therefore its convolution which is sigma alpha is multiplicative we can't say it's completely multiplicative but it is definitely multiplicative so that's one observation which you need to make that this function which we have defined here is a multiplicative function and it can be expressed as n raised to alpha times u if n is equal to p1 raised to a1 p2 raised to a2 up to ps raised to as then how many divisors are there okay then the number of divisors of n what will it be the divisors of n will look like p1 raised to b1 p2 raised to b2 up to es raised to bs where each bi lies between 0 it can also take the value 0 to 
ai that means each bi has ai plus 1 choices hence the number of divisors will be a1 plus 1 this is by using the multiplication principle this is a1 plus 1 into a2 plus 1 up to as plus 1 okay so this will be the number of divisors of n okay so now let us see what is the inverse of sigma alpha uh, so what is sigma alpha sigma alpha is as i have said before it is n raised to alpha convolution with u this means that sigma alpha inverse will be n raised to alpha the whole inverse times u inverse now as i have told you n raised to alpha is completely multiplicative which means that the inverse of n raised to alpha will be mu times n raised to alpha this convolution with we know that the inverse of u is mu now therefore you can see that sigma alpha inverse of n will be summation d divides n you can see here this will be mu of d n raised to alpha of d is d raised to alpha into mu of n by d which is exactly what our theorem states so we have the inverse of sigma alpha notice here that we have used group theory to get the inverse of alpha okay so we will end with uh, this theorem and i will see you in the next session thank you